Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have x times 3 to the power x plus 1 equals 5x plus 4, and we're going to be solving for x values. I call this equation non-standard because it doesn't fit typical equations like exponential, polynomial, you know, quadratic or radical, whatever. It's kind of like a mixture. So let's see how we can solve these problems. Obviously, you cannot solve this problem by using the regular methods that you use for standard equations. We're going to be solving this equation and then also taking a look at the graph because the graph is going to give us uh, really good ideas. So first of all, when you try to solve something like this, one of the things that you should always look at, and this is a general principle, is do you have an increasing function? Do you have a decreasing function? If you have increasing on one side and a decreasing on another side, that means that you're going to have a single solution, right? For example, if you have something that increases and something that decreases, they can only intersect at a single point, right? So you kind of need to have that type of information and you can find out by using derivatives. Let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand side. Obviously, this is a line with a positive slope, which means it's always increasing because the derivative of 5x plus 4 is just 5 and that's positive, right? Obviously, linear equations are always increasing or decreasing depending on their slope. And as you know, the slope is the coefficient of x, mx plus p. Remember that form? Okay. Now, on the left hand side, we have something more complicated. So if you go ahead and call this f of x, you can go ahead and differentiate it and write this as a product rule tells you derivative of x times the second function plus the derivative of 3a to the power over x plus 1. How do you differentiate a to the power something, right? Well, first of all, you write the same thing and then you differentiate the inside, which is in this case the exponent, which is 1, the derivative of x plus 1, and then you multiply the natural log of the base. If you have an e at the base, then ln e is 1, so you don't write it. Make sense? It's just a special case. Now, this is the derivative, and I can definitely set that equal to 0, right? To find critical points, which most of the time means the points where the graph has a horizontal tangent, which usually indicates maxima and minima. Uh, well, this is kind of simple because we can take out 3 to the power x plus 1 as a common factor, and then this is going to give us 1 plus ln 3 equals 0. Obviously, 1 plus ln 3 is not going to be 0, right? ln 3 is greater than 0, right? It's even greater than 1, I think, because 3 is greater than e. So this is definitely positive, and it can't be 0, and this can't be 0 either which means that there are no x values for which this function is, uh, the derivative of this function is zero, which means it's not going to have, um, a, what do you call it, a maximum or minimum point, which means it's either going to increase all the time or decrease. In this case, the derivative is positive, right? It's always positive. So we can kind of write it that way on the left-hand side, but that doesn't mean negative. Be careful about that. So our derivative is negative. Uh, I was gonna, derivative is positive, which means f is always increasing, right? So does that mean uh, the right-hand side is increasing? So we kind of have two increasing functions. That's kind of like a dead end, right? I mean, it's not going to help you. Two increasing functions can intersect in so many ways. And if you think about it, like if one of them is linear and the other one is kind of curvy, they might intersect at two points. The million-dollar question is, can they intersect at two, uh, three or more points? That's actually a very interesting problem. I think we recently did a problem that has that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can simplify the process because so far what we did didn't help. So here's what we're going to do, and I hope you got to see that too. We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by x. I want to isolate the exponential. So let's divide by x. x cancels out. Of course, x cannot be 0. We knew that, right? Obviously, 0 is not a solution. We know that. So from here, we get the following. And this is actually very nice. Now, look at this. 3 to the power x plus 1. That's just an exponential. You know it's always increasing, but much better than x times this, right? And on the right-hand side, you can kind of split it up. Right? This has 5 plus 4 over x. 
And that's just awesome. You know why? Because 4 over x is a hyperbola and it's always decreasing. You know why? If you just consider this g of x, call this g of x, and differentiate g of x, that's going to be negative 4 over x squared. You probably know the derivative of 1 over x, right? And this is always negative. Obviously, x equals 0 gives us a problem. If you look at the original function, x equals 0 causes a problem, which we call an asymptote, right? If you think about 5 plus 4 over x, what happens is limit as, I don't need a you know, a cursor, uh, cursive for that. As x approaches 0 of 5 plus 4 over x, right? And of course, you kind of have to look at it from either side. If uh, x approaches 0 from the right, 4 over 0 plus is going to approach positive infinity. So it's going to approach positive infinity. A lot of times people say hey, limit doesn't exist, but it's just infinity, okay? And if x approaches 0 from the left, you're going to have a negative infinity situation and plus 5 is not going to really make a difference. It's not going to make a dent. So we're going to have two different limits. Obviously, limit doesn't exist anyways, but this kind of tells you what happens around 0. So at 0, we kind of have a dotted line, which indicates that you have a vertical asymptote. And our graph is supposed to approach infinity like this from the right and negative infinity like this from the left. I and mean, we know that this function is always decreasing, right? So that you can tell. But the problem is the graph breaks at 0. And that makes a huge difference. By the way, do you think this graph is going to intersect the x-axis? That means y equals 0. But as you can see here, y cannot be 0. Can it? Maybe it can. Let's go ahead and find out. If 5 plus 4 over x is equal to 0, 4 over x is negative 5. Actually, that happens. x equals negative 4 over 5. So at negative 4 over 5, the graph will have a x intercept, which is going to be something like this. And it's going to go like this. Wow. Maybe there's a horizontal asymptote as well, right? How do you find a horizontal asymptote? You take the limit as x approaches infinity. If you take the limit as x approaches infinity, obviously, you're going to get this approaching 0, and this limit will be 5. That means y equals 5 is a horizontal asymptote. And x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Awesome. So the graph is basically going to be placed between those two asymptotes. And this kind of explains why we have an x-intercept, but that's in the negative region. But we don't have another x-intercept. Make sense? Okay. Give you a lot of information about one graph, but hopefully this is helpful uh, for so many reasons. And now we're going to compare it to our function on the left-hand side, which is 3 to the power x plus 1. Obviously, 3 to the power x plus 1 is going to be increasing. It's going to have, let's go ahead and write it down here. At x equals 0, it's going to go through a 3. So it's going to be like this. And as x approaches infinity, it's going to approach infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, notice that 3 to the power of negative infinity is going to approach 0. So it's going to approach the x-axis. So it's supposed to go something like this, right? Hmm. Does that mean there are two solutions? Yes, there are two solutions, and one of them is positive, the other one is negative. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the function from this perspective. Obviously, if you're looking for an easy solution, then you should probably be looking for integers or rationals, right? Obviously, irrationals are going to be really hard to find, and they're probably not going to work. But look at this. We want a power of 3. What happens if x is equal to 0? Obviously, that's not a solution. You know that, right? But we get 3 equals 5 plus, oh, wait a minute, x equals 0 is not acceptable because that's an asymptote. Come on, what am I talking about? How about x equals 1? You get 3 to the power 2 equals maybe 5 plus 4 over 1. Does 9 equal 9? Yes, check. So x equals 1 is a solution. What about the other case? Okay, great. If x equals 1 is a solution, does that mean x equals negative 1 is a solution as well? Let's plug it in. If x is equal to negative 1, you get 3 to the power 0, which is 1. If x is negative 1, you get 5 minus 4 over 1, which is 1. So negative 1 is another solution. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. There's a much better graph than mine. And as you can see, they intersect at 1 and negative 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.